Today we're going to make a solution, um, and this solution is going to be, in this case, copper 2 sulfate. The math is on the board on how to calculate to make a solution. Here it says the molarity that we are shooting for is 0 0.085, and it says that yours may be different. The volume is 250 milliliters, and we're going to use a 250 milliliter volumetric flask. Again, yours will be different. The math states for the molarity that our volume needs to be in liters, so we do this conversion below to get 0.25 liters. Here's the equation for molarity. We're going to rearrange it algebraically. Remember, you're either on top or on bottom. The moles are on top, the liters are on the bottom, and the molarity is on top. We'll put an understood one underneath it, and then we move the liters up and over to get the new equation of liters time molarity to equal moles. We'll need the moles to figure out the mass and which we'll add on the chart. Here's the rearranged algebraic equation for molarity to equal the moles. So we're going to have the 0.2 liters times, sorry, 0.25 liters times a 0 0.085 molar um, to come up with the number of moles of copper sulfate. Now this copper sulfate is going to be pentahydrate, so five waters are incorporated into the crystal. So this is the number of moles. We don't have mole machines. We have mass machines. So we're going to need to figure out the mass. So we have one copper, one sulfur, four oxygens, and five waters, which you could split out if you want to, but waters weigh 18.02 each. So the formula weight for this compound with the pentahydrate is 249.72. That's grams per mole, not grams. This is relative to one single mole. So we do moles on top and then moles on bottom. One mole of the copper sulfate pentahydrate equals to 249.72. We multiply it and we get 5.37 grams. Now, we need to weigh out 5.37 grams on a scale and then make the solution with that. Here we have our tools for this lab. We have the actual chemical in a weighing boat. We have uh, three different volumetric flasks. You'll use one of them. You'll be assigned. Here's a scoopula. Uh, it's great for digging things out and you know, scooping things up, that kind of thing. Here's an empty weighing boat, a uh, 250 milliliter beaker of distilled water, a powder funnel that has a big hole in it. That's why it's a powder funnel and a piece of parafilm. You have to take the, pa the paper off for it to work. And then the blue top is distilled water you can squirt with. Lastly, we have an electronic balance. It's going to be good to the hundredth of a gram. Here we're going to lift the lid up. Some people forget to do that. Put the weighing boat on there. Push tear or zero, and it makes it zeroed out so that the it doesn't weigh the actual boat. It starts from whatever you put on top of that. We're going to put this right on top of it because you guys will spill it. And if you spill it, it goes right in there. We're going to dig out the amount until we get exactly the right amount. If you put too much in, you can put it back into the weighing boat. We never put extra chemicals back into the actual bottle, not unless I say you can. But I don't have a problem with you putting an excess amount back into the uh, kind of classroom shared stock, which you be. So we're looking for that number. It's kind of hard to read. I put a little too much, a little too little, going back and forth between it. You want it to be as close as possible to what we calculate. If it's more, then the concentration is going to be more. If it's less, it's going to be less. So, and we're going to use a, a method at the end to try to determine exactly what we have. So here, I got 5.37 grams sitting on the scale. We're going to get the 250 milliliter volumetric flask. We're going to pour some distilled water in there. We want to fill about halfway up. It's not a measured halfway. We just want to put some liquid in there so that when we put the ionic solid in, it will be able to dissolve into water. Also, we don't want it too full because we want to shake it up and swirl it around. If it's too full, it's going to not be able to have this agitation. So here's our powder funnel. It doesn't always fit in there. This one does. If you have a 100 milliliter, it'll just fit on top and you just have to hold it flush. Now I'm going to get my already masked out copper sulfate. Uh, I tend to call it tacoing the shell. So you taco it uh, from opposite corners and you can pour it in. 
We want to make sure that everything we weighed out actually gets in there. So I'm going to squirt a little water in here and make sure every little blue piece gets in there. Also, it needs to get into the volumetric flask. So rinse out your funnel there. It's getting all in there, all the solids in there. Here's where we get our little piece of parafilm. We take the plastic uh, piece and take the paper off of it. And it's somewhere between wax paper and parafilm. We stick a little on top, kind of bend it down, rope it around a little bit. And then I still don't trust it. So I put my hand actually on the edge and go back and forth with it until it's dissolved. It won't dissolve immediately. You have to do this for a couple minutes. You can let it sit there. You can swirl it. But if you turn it upside down, just go ahead and put your, top, your hand on top of the flask. Here I am. Just put my finger on it. It's got the parafilm, so I'm not getting my finger wet. And I go back and forth until it's all dissolved. If you keep shaking it up, you'll still have air bubbles, but air bubbles are not the ionic crystal. We're going to take this off. Now, there's a line on it. There's a white line or a dark line on there, and that's what we're going to fill it up to. I'm only going to fill it up close to it because I won't be able to get as precise as I want just by pouring. So I put the water from the beaker into it, fill it up, up to the neck. And then from there, I'm going to use the squirt bottle to do the rest. You can see the little white line. This is a bad angle because I see an oval. You want to see a line straight across. So you should be looking at perpendicular like this. And I squirt it in until it goes up to the actual line. Now, as I add to it, it's going to go up and up and up. And again, you want to use the squirt bottle to go little by little. You want it to be in the bottom of the meniscus. There's the line, and it curves, and so the bottom of the curve is touching the line, not the middle, not the top. Now, the top part is actually mostly water, and the bottom part is mostly the solution, so we still got to stir it up one more time. Just do a couple of ins and outs like this, and that way that it's completely uniform or the same. Now we're going to put our name, either our initial something on there so I know whose it is, and then the actual molarity that you made. Everybody will be making something different. And we're going to test these afterwards. This video is only showing you how to make the solution. And any solution will be made the same way. So now that you have that done with your name on it and the concentration. By the way, you can write with a Sharpie right on the glass or the little blue tab. And sometimes the white tab, you can use a pencil. Or you can put a piece of tape around it. Uh, we just want a good amount in here. It's not a measured amount, so just fill it up. And then we may not use it today. In fact, we probably won't. So try, let's make it airtight by getting another piece of parafilm and putting it around the outside of it. All done.